but what did you expect from the bloodshot eye that wouldn't die? Laughs? How come when 20 kids see a 40-foot eye come out of a river, the police never believe it? Hey, Maxwell, you should have been with us. Oh, yeah, Maxwell, you missed the beauty. What's the matter, Arnold? Hey, Max, what are you hiding? No, I'm not hiding anything. Maxwell, what's going on? Uh, I can't tell you about it. Okay, fine. I'm going AWOL. <laughs> what? This doesn't have anything to do with that Jeep you smashed up last month, does it, Maxwell? No, but that was the start of it. I was... I tried to raise money to pay for the damages by getting into a poker game at the Rusty Spur. How much did you lose? $62.20. <laughs> Is that all? I thought you said you were in big trouble. Plus a $500 IOU. Maxwell, you are in trouble. Ooh, you're right. Those guys play rough. Private Campbell only owed $90. What happened to him? Well, we'll know a lot more when they take all those wires out of his jaw. <laughs> That's it, huh? I'm leaving. We're not going to let you go AWOL just because you got mixed up in some crooked poker game. Crooked? How do you know it was crooked? Oh, come on, Max. Well, that deck have more marks on it than a Chinese postcard, brother. People like that should be deep fat fried. <laughs> you tell Major Hawkins I wanted to see him? Yes, he'll be right in, sir. Good. Uh, take a letter, Corporal. Mr. and Mrs. Glenn Campbell, 28 Geronimo Way, Phoenix, Arizona. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Campbell, as your son's commanding officer, let me just say that we here at Camp Tar Creek do not condone curd games. Curd games, sir? <laughs> How do you spell that? C-U-R-D. It's right here in their letter. I believe they're the traditional games of the fig harvest in the Middle East, played by groups of warriors on horseback using long bamboo sticks and a small pig. I see. The warriors are called Kurds, hence Kurd games. Fascinating, sir. Oh, thank you, Corporal. Come in, Major. Be with you in a minute. Thank you, sir. I want to thank you for your patience, and may I assure you that henceforth, no one under my command will participate in Kurd games without protective headgear. <laughs> Yours, etc., etc. Uh, make sure that goes out in the morning mail. Yes, sir. Curd game, sir? Very dangerous, Hawk. Private Campbell had his jaw broken playing it. He did? Mm. Uh, his parents wrote to complain. Here, you can read their letter. I seem to remember reading a dandy write-up on the Kurds in an old issue of the National Geographic. I think the games are played at twilight on the final day of the fig harvest. Uh, sir, it's played by three teams, 48 men to a side, with no timeouts. It's card games, sir. The winners, of course, get to roast the pig over the bamboo sticks, while the women of the tribe sing the traditional victory song, uh, which, if I'm not mistaken, goes, Sir, it is card games. The A is a little funny, I grant you. But it's card games, all right. <laughs> Corporal Gray, make that card games and omit the part about protective headgear. <laughs> card games, you say? A very serious situation, sir. I've had four or five complaints myself. That's right. My informants tell me that a lot of soldiers have lost their paychecks gambling at the Rusty Spur. Well, let's put a stop to it. I'll start investigation immediately. May I suggest, sir, that both Tar Creek and the Rusty Spur be considered off-limits until I can get to the bottom of this? Fine, fine idea. Wessel, inform the men. My pleasure, sir. Uh, and gentlemen, I've never been more serious in my life. I want this business about curd games kept strictly under your hats. <laughs> man to get dressed. You're not just talking about any man. You're talking about dealing Dan. The gambling man. You look like a string bean from New Orleans. I appreciate what you're doing. What are you doing? We're gonna swipe one card from those hustlers so we can find out how they mark them. Then we take them. Oh. Well, uh, can I help? If they recognize you, it'll blow the sting. Oh. That's right, Max. Well, besides, we need you here, my man. Just in case anything happens to us, so you can notify next to kid. <laughs> Come on, Mo. <laughs> wow. Looks like you guys are going on a big night on the town. Well, we were going to invite you along, Russell, but we decided we'd rather have a good time. Well, we need a good time in town tonight. <laughs> 
Colonel Clapp has ordered Tar Creek and the Rusty Spur off limits. Off what? Limits. To protect you guys from the unsavory characters who hang out there. We are the unsavory characters who hang out there. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're not going. Anyone caught in town will be flirting with an Article 15. I knew this plan wouldn't work. I'm a dead man. Plan? Uh-huh. You guys are up to something, aren't you? You're on to us, Wessel. You know, it's so difficult to hide anything from that quick silver mind of yours. Shh, don't it. You tell him and the cat's out of the basket. <laughs> no, wait a minute, Cardinal. Don't treat our man Wessel like that. Listen to him in on what's happening. We're trying to help Maxwell keep from getting his jaw broken by a bunch of thugs. You want to help us? What, are you kidding? Hey, if Maxwell's in trouble, it's his own fault. It's warm, Wessel. Well, I guess we'll have to go to the Rusty Spur by ourselves. No, you can't do that. It's off limits. Now, where did you ever get a crazy idea like that? I just told you. What? The Tar Creek and the Rusty Spur is off limits. I didn't hear him say that. Did anybody in this room hear him say that? <laughs> you? No, I, I didn't hear uh, uh, Not me. Didn't hear a thing. All right, forget it. I know what you're doing, but you're not going to get away with it because the minute you leave this barracks, I'm reporting it to Colonel Clapp. Okay, I think I'll just jot down a few names. That's Baker, Valentine, Cardinal, Wessel. <laughs> Put your name down, because you're coming with us. Forget it. You think I'm putting my army career on the line? Putting it on the line? Look here, we're trying to make your career. Saving soldiers, busting up gambling rings. Might even mean a big pat on the back from Hawkins. Maybe even a promotion. <laughs> of course, we got to go pick up Lola. Come on, Sarge. <laughs> in this backwater town was Hicks until you walked in. You're cute. What brings you to a burg like this? Well, let's just say things got a little too hot for me and shy. <laughs> Boyfriend trouble, huh? You might say that. I just got tired of the mansion, the limo, <laughs> furs, jewelry, being pampered like a pet. So you got cabin fever, huh? Exactly. You see, I tend to get restless. Every now and then I have to get away and sharpen my claws. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. What does she mean? How did you find me? Are you kidding? It was easy for the weasel here. We tracked you through every sleazy motel in the Southwest. That's right, you changed your name, but you didn't change your perfume. The weasel here has a nose of a hawk. Isn't that the eyes of a hawk? That too. <laughs> Card, doll. For God's sake, no more killing on this trip. What? Don't argue with me. No more killing willy-nilly. He killed willy-nilly? <laughs> I kind of like the way he's saying it. Watch the weeds. He gets a little nervous. Yeah, see that. For your own sake, leave well enough alone. I can take care of myself. I see here that uh, you boys indulge. Yeah, we've been known to. Are you going to be in town tomorrow night? Could be. How about you? Could be. Wouldn't mind wagering a few pesos before we go back to the Windy City. Chicago? <laughs> You've heard of it. Well, uh, then we can arrange a friendly little uh, no-limit poker. Sure. 
What are the stakes? Table stakes, and uh, bring the doll with you. Now, don't tell me what to do. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We'll be there, and we'll bring the lady with us. <clears throat> Get out of here. Just make sure you bring plenty of bucks. Let's go, Weez. <laughs> They look scared in there, Weez? Oh, come on. They gotta be scared. They're bluffing. We got them right where we want them. This caper will be a piece of cake. Just gotta make sure there's no slip-ups. These guys play rough. Yeah, I'd hate to have my legs broken. Legs aren't as bad as kneecaps and elbows. Oh, not to mention jaws. <laughs> ill-spent youth. Baker, you have an ace. Maxwell, you have a king. Cardinal, you have a six. And myself, the master deal of all times, has a ten of clubs. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man, that was great. How'd you do that? It's called the old four-corner peach. Why do they call it that? Because one of the corners is always peeking out, and that's the corner that you read. You mean, you mean you can tell what card I have by reading the back? Precisely, my man. Precisely. Baker, you have a king. There's a seven. There's a deuce. And myself, the master blaster, a queen. <laughs> now, we spent all day fixing these cards with the identical marks that the crooks used. That's right. So when they look at the cards, they'll think it's a four, but us, we will know it's an ace. Now, as you recall, there are three unopened decks sitting on the table. Now, oh, wait a minute. Not so fast, as slick. <laughs> if the cards were unopened, how did they mark them? Observe my skeptical Peruvian friend. <laughs> That switch one more time. All right, first, we let him win a few hands just to sucker him in. Then, I'll order a new deck, Tony will order a drink and he'll spill it, and in the commotion, we'll switch our deck for theirs. We're gonna get caught and killed. <laughs> no one's gonna get hurt if you do exactly what we say. Those cheating gringo dogs. <laughs> Confirmation, sir. By gosh, Hort, this is bigger than we thought. You know, according to this computer readout, they've been running that crooked game everywhere in the country between Fort Benning and Fort Bliss. It's always the same M.O. They show up on payday, bilk our men out of their money, and then move on up to the next post. Scoundrels. You know, I can relate to that, Hawk. When I was a young man, there was a gang of ruffians who used to stop me on the way to my cornet lesson and cheat me out of my snack money. <laughs> really? Yeah, they put my coronet out in the middle of a busy street and make me bet that I could rescue it before a car ran over it. That's really interesting. To this day, I shudder when I hear the sound of a bus horn. <laughs> yeah. Well, they really made a mistake this time, sir, because we've got them in our own backyard. The, the same ruffians who took my coronet? No, sir. The gamblers. Oh, 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 that's right. Well, well, why don't we have them arrested and put behind bars where they belong? Not so fast, sir. I don't want these babies slipping through my fingers when I'm this close to them. Oh, that's right, Hawk. Let's not take any chances. This one's for every fighting man and woman in America. We'll go and talk to the men, see if we can get some positive identification, some hard evidence, and then we'll make our move. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
get out of here, huh? You're making me lose. Animal. It's all right, honey. Stand by me. Bring me a little luck. You seem to be doing pretty good without the bride. Hey. Come on, deal. Thank you. Annie up. Things going as planned. Val and Tony lost the first 15 hands. Over. 15 hands. I'm glad to hear things are going so well. <laughs> By golly, where is everybody, Maxwell? I don't know anything, sir. May I, sir? Oh, certainly. Stand at ease, Maxwell. I am at ease, sir. Corporal Wessel. Oh, he's not here, sir. Ah, and Baker, Valentine, Cardinal? Uh, oh, they're probably with Wessel, sir. Oh, that's odd. I didn't know those men hung around with Corporal Wessel. They don't, sir. Maybe I've taken the wrong approach. Now, you answer me, Private. Were you ever involved in that poker game at the Rusty Spur? Yes or no? Oh, uh, no. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes, yes, but I only did it to raise money for the Jeep I wrecked. But you were there. Yes, sir. Can you describe the gamblers to me? Oh, gamblers. Oh, well, well, there were two guys. A, a mean guy and, and a meaner guy. If they don't have to start winning soon, they're going to have to bet the rustiest spare. Maxwell? Can you read me? Hello, Maxwell. <laughs> Yes, Cardinal. I can read you loud and clear. Mr. Hawkins? <laughs> Sorry, wrong number. Cardinal? Cardinal! I'll tell you on the way. I don't know anything. I think you guys are on a major, major losing a streak. Major? Major. Uh, maybe it's time we change the deck, you know, just to change our luck around. Hey, that's a three hundred dollar suit. Clumsy. <laughs> Stay with me. Okay, fellas, you play with these. Thanks, Russell. You guys are in the big leagues now. I'll deal with you. Boy, I didn't realize how late it was getting. Yeah, it's uh, funny how time flies when you're involved playing a friendly game of poker. <laughs> we gotta get going so you can deal us out of this one. <laughs> Nobody likes a party pooper. Okay, fellas, just one more hand. Can it get you home early, huh? It's okay with her. Yeah, it's okay with you. Sure, why not? Okay, I will call. By golly, you were right, Hawk. There they are playing cards. Full house. Kings over threes. Let's see what you got. Two pair. Both aces. Wait a second. I dealt you two aces. Where'd you get the other two? <laughs> What's going on here, Cardinal? Oh, you should have seen it, Major. Valentine and Baker just have slickered these crooks out of everything but their socks. <laughs> you got them all cards. You best learn how to read them. How'd you like to read through a punched eye? Oh, yeah? You're dealing with the hands and feet of death. <laughs> you have to deal with a man who knows Taekwondo. It's very nice. Wessel, the Taekwondo doesn't work. Try the furniture. Join 
in, Hawk? <laughs> That's right, General. They're in custody now, down at the Tar Creek Jail, thanks to the men at my command. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, General. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, it did get a little rough for a while. I even got in a few licks myself. You can tell Southwest Command to rest easy. They can always count on the boys of Tar Creek. <laughs> By gum, the general is just as happy as a lark. Well, he should be, sir. The man made me proud. Yes, sir, we got something to fight for. Maxwell, here's your IOU. Gee. Thanks, people. And, uh, Wessel. That's Wessel. That's right. I just wanted you to know that we couldn't have done it without you. There's one more thing. Tonight was the worst demonstration of self-defense that I have ever seen. Uh, well, sir, we were just getting started when you jumped in. Well, all you men will report at 0600 hours for an intensive course in karate, judo, and other lethal forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat. By gum, I'll join you myself. I think that barroom brawl gave me enough confidence to take up the cornet again. <laughs> At ease, we'll continue. Oh, man, I don't know about you, but I'm wasted. Yeah, I haven't been this tired since I was a referee in a tag team mud wrestling contest. <laughs> I feel every bone in my body. You can see every bone in your body. That talk is something else, man. I didn't know there was so much to that karate. Kicking, screaming, jumping. I tell you, the man is incredible. Yeah, I know what he really is. He's amazing. If anybody told me I could break 12 bricks with my bare hands, I'd tell him they were crazy. And he wants us to get up to 14. And he's convinced me I can do it. And as soon as these heal, I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> Tomorrow, two teenagers die, and that could be just the beginning, unless T.J. Hooker can stop the traffic of bootleg booze. Then Captain Ted Baxter challenges Captain Gavin McLeod to a battle of the love boats in a wild 